In this video, we are going to discuss about memory management. So let's first understand what memory management is. The moment the operating system accepts a request for any job, it needs to allocate that job some primary memory and some secondary memory. Why is that needed? Because the program will need space to keep its input data, its output data, its user instructions, as well as any data that has been generated in the interim while the process is going on. So the operating system has to strike a balance between allocating the primary memory and the secondary memory. Why this balance is required? Because primary memory is very fast but expensive at the same time. Secondary memory is not expensive but then it is slower as well. So, if I want to have a formal definition of memory management, what will I say? I'll say that the process of regulating computer memory and using optimization techniques to enhance the overall system performance is called memory management. Now, you must remember that once that execution of that program, that job is complete, the operating system will release the memory that it has allocated. So the operating system uses many techniques to allocate the memory space. Let's see what these techniques are. The first and the foremost or the easiest one is contiguous storage allocation. Contiguous means continuous. What the operating system will do the moment the job comes, it will make an estimate of how much memory is required and it will allocate that chunk of memory in the secondary memory as well as the primary memory. The amount that is required in the primary memory and the amount that is required in the secondary memory. However, this has a small problem that whole chunk might not be available. So in reality, the operating system will use a non-contiguous storage allocation technique. What does that mean? Non-contiguous that means non-continuous. So there is one chunk that is available here, there is one chunk of memory that is available here, there is one chunk of memory available here. So what the operating system will do? It will break down the program or the job into different segments and each segment will be stored in one location. It will have a table where the address, the memory address of the starting location will be stored. Now how this breaking down is done? It is done in two ways program paging and program segmentation what happens in program paging a program is broken down into fixed size page say operating system has already decided that it will have eight bytes of page length so it will divide the program that has come into eight bytes eight bytes eight bytes okay one eight byte will be stored in one location one eight byte will be stored in one location so that is what program paging does. There is another method, program segmentation. Here the program is not broken down into fixed memory lengths, but they are broken down logically. Say one program segment or one part of the program is doing one function, so that is to be together logically and the second one has to be logically together, so that will be stored logically. Why this is needed? You must remember that the operating system does not only need to store the program, it has to retrieve also. So if one part of a logical segment is stored at one place and the another part is stored at another place, then there will be time lag. The processing time will increase. So it is ideal to use a program segmentation. However, there is a small problem there also. A program segment might be so small that it is not taking the complete space that is available. So what the operating system does? It uses a combination of program paging and program segmentation techniques. Now there is one another technique that we must discuss about which is called virtual paging. The program that needs to reside in the primary memory is the part of the program that needs to be retrieved first or fastest. But the computer or the operating system might not have that much of space available to it in the primary memory. So what it does is that it allocates a space in the secondary memory itself, but it keeps it for those programs that have to be those parts of the program that have to be retrieved quickly. So I as a user will feel that that part of the program is stored in the primary memory, but 
actually it is stored in the secondary memory by the operating system. There is a minuscule time lag in that but we generally do not feel that. So this is called virtual paging. Why virtual? Because in reality it is so stored somewhere else and virtually I feel that it is in the program primary memory. So in this video we have understood how the operating system manages its memory, the primary memory as well as the secondary memory. In the next video we are going to discuss about file management.